Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, everyone. Ryan here, and in this long overdue video, I'm taking a look at the newest version of Wall of Sound, two notes, software answer to sort of everything guitar amp post-processing, whether we're talking about EQ, cabinet emulation, reverb, and much more. This is a plugin that well, I've had for a couple years at this point, but I've never really taken advantage of it to its full extent. And as such, I didn't really think it made a whole lot of sense to cover it. I use either more basic programs or more advanced plugins in certain aspects to craft my guitar tones, but I'm using this in a very particular way in some upcoming material that I think really encapsulates everything this is trying to do. And I wanted to show that and show you some other ways that you can take advantage of it as well. So Wall of Sound is an interesting plugin in general because it's actually included in a lot of Two Notes products. So the Two Notes Captor Reactive Load Box I use for direct recording all my amp heads. It comes bundled with this and it actually comes with a handful of cabinets as well, both on the guitar and bass side of things. But let's say that you don't own any other Two Notes hardware or software, but you still want to get in on the cabinet and other types of hardware emulation. You can still do that but it's kind of a, a weird pricing model, at least in the ways that you would see in other software. So you basically download a 30 day free trial. You get access to a handful of cabinets and microphones and some of the other features are limited, but in terms of accessibility, there's really no upfront cost. What allows you to keep the program though, is if you own a virtual cabinet. For instance, other common impulse response vendors like Redwires or ML Sound Lab or especially Ownhammer, will kind of group their IRs into packs, and you can certainly buy cab packs from Two Notes as well at a discount, but they're generally sorted by like speaker type and they use the same collection of microphones. They're very scientifically and systematically captured, which is good in one way um, for production, but perhaps make them all sound a bit samey in uh, another regard. With Two Notes, you can actually buy individual cabinets and they all have specific you know, stock speakers or replace speakers in them and they even use different microphones for each. So they'll determine what could sound good here, maybe not so good there. So as we go through some of these examples, you'll notice there might be an SM7B on one cabinet and not on another, but it'll be replaced with a different condenser, which all gives them more character. And so far, I, I really like the way they go about that. Um, but the other way to look at it is, you know, for $8 per cabinet, which is the way they price them, some people might see that as a bit steep compared to what you get altogether and say those other competing companies. But when you look at a regular cabinet, it's going to cost you anywhere from like 300 bucks on the low end to two grand on the high end. And it's really not that bad, not considering the microphones and preamps and all the post-processing. And you can certainly get a discount if you buy more at the same time. So after you make this initial cabinet purchase or set of purchases, or you activate a pack that's bundled with Torpedo hardware, then you're allowed to keep not only the cabinet emulation side, but all the great features that come with Wall of Sound. And I think that's where this really shines. Sure, it does a great job at all of the cabinet emulation, and it can even load third-party impulse responses, which has compatibility with not only this software, but any amp modelers or stuff that you use, which does have an advantage over the specific two notes cabs. But all the other things that this can do really outshines normal third-party impulse response loaders in a lot of ways. But if you don't need it for that purpose, then it doesn't really matter. And that's kind of why I haven't used this to the full extent up until now. So because this is kind of a mixing utility, I'm not gonna have my usual intro playthrough. We're just gonna go through some of the features, how I use them and where I would recommend this for bedroom guitar players and music producers like me. Before we go over all the things that makes Wall of Sound worthwhile as a plugin, I thought it would be useful to show you how I approach cabinet emulation on a software level in general, starting with the most simplistic use case with Ignite Amp's original release of NatIR. This is kind of my bare bones, just plug of impulse response into the signal chain and be done. This is about as bare minimum as it gets. It does have a couple bells and whistles. You can, you know, mod it to either mono, dual mono, or stereo. If you'd like to pan these or mix between two instances. Um, you kind of have a folder view here of everything that's in the current folder, which is good for own hammer IRs and the way that I organize them. But generally, unless you want to get really fancy with adding some, you know, phasing and slight delay and blending between the two, this is just kind of like, I need one IR loaded up, not a whole lot of CPU usage, turn up the quality and I'm done. 
And this is kind of my first pass at, you know, if either I'm working with an amp head or just need a sound quickly and I know what IR I want to use. It's just kind of a one and done thing. Now, of course, Ignite Amps has released an updated version of NAT IR with the STL Tones collaboration. And this has some built-in IRs already there from the Randall Kirk Hammett cabinet, which includes V30 speakers. They've got some different microphone combinations. Have some pretty decent presets as well. Of course, you can still load and do everything that you could in the original NAT IR. Still play around with the gain, low pass, high pass. But they did add a couple interesting additions that you won't find in that. So first, there's like a room control, which gives you some really quick, um, like immediate bounce back room reverb. It's not like big luscious hall or anything, but this kind of simulates the mic in a studio kind of sound, or especially like a, a loft is what it really sounds like to me. And then you have this resonance control, which you'll find on the TPA one power amp, which kind of acts as like an additional load box resonance in a way. So you get that low 70 to 100 hertz bump, and then everything past, say, 1,000 hertz starts to get more accentuated as well. So this can help bring an otherwise sort of flat-sounding IR to life, but if you're already using a reactive load box on an amp head, really not necessary. It's a good control, though. Then we have sort of the big daddy of the bunch with Fractal Audio's Cab Lab. There are plenty of other plugins that you know, have like visual elements with their graphic UI, make it look like you're mixing between you know microphone positions. You've got stuff like... Uh, Miko from ML Sound Lab, which is a really cool implementation. But for what I want, there's really not a whole lot that can top this. I have enough cabinet IRs already, not to mention the ones that I make myself, that it really just is not going to do me much good to go out and buy them anymore. So what is actually really useful about this is mixing them, turning them into fractal audio files, or simply leaving it as the plugin and using it with real amp heads. So as you can see, you can load up to eight different impulse responses, mix them in either serial or parallel. There's really no reason you would want to do it in series unless you like stacking speaker sounds. And that sounds pretty awful. So for instance, we got like a regular kind of, you know, mix between a V30 and a green back sound here. Then I can mix in the rear sound and you can actually see what it's doing to the output frequency response, which is super helpful when I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to blend in to get a certain phasey sound or cut this frequency. And of course you can see what that does to the time domain as well. And so this is like the ultimate virtual cabinet builder for me, if you already have all the IRs that you need. And so that's where two notes doesn't really come in handy for me. I've got the cab stuff figured out. It's everything else after that, because if I were mixing in a bus or, you know, say I was trying to get just a perfectly polished guitar sound for a demo, then you're talking about multiband compression touch of dynamic EQ, maybe static EQ, maybe some limiting. And, you know, that's going to take a larger plugin chain and it's not covered here. But that's where we get into the wall of sound plugins. So let's start with the first derivative here with the arcade mode. If this would like to load, that'd be great. So there's two distinct modes you can run wall of sound in. The first being this sort of arcade implementation where the controls may not exactly tell you what it's doing in terms of processing, it just gives you a result. And this is a good kind of first impression or introduction to the tones that are available on the software, or especially if you're kind of new to guitar production and you don't necessarily need to emulate the exact controls of outboard compressors or EQs, and you just want to make a sound. I think this is a good way to start. So as you can see, you can actually make this a full stereo setup, starting with the actual cabinet microphone section. You see I'm switching between the cabinets that I own, which is a decent selection as is. And then you have the corresponding microphones for each. And as we go through here, you'll notice that between the two cabs I have selected on the left and right, they're not actually going to correspond 100%. So there'll be some here that aren't here and vice versa, which again goes back to that kind of point about these sounding a little bit more unique, I think, than some other impulse response vendors. And then you have the rest of the signal chain, which is mirrored, um, but you can absolutely you know, use these independently if you want one side to sound completely different. So let's start from the bottom and work our way up. And that's because I feel these parameters down towards the bottom are more of your cut and dry cabinet emulation. Not a whole lot fancy going on, but as you continue upwards, and it's actually closer to the beginning of the signal chain, then you get into territory where it needs less outboard gear or external plugins and even less accurate amplifier emulation to sound good. And you'll see why in a moment. So starting with level, 
this is your standard output and panning controls. You can make this full stereo. You can sum them to mono, do something in between. If you mute one side, then it'll just get rid of that row entirely or column rather. And uh, you end up with a mono signal path. The distance parameter does pretty much what it says it's going to do. Make your microphone further away, though it kind of already figures out the exact position for you without having to play the guessing game or knowing a particular number, which is good if you're just getting into this kind of stuff. And as you go further, it dials in more reverb automatically, which is determined by the room that you have selected for each cabinet. So you got stuff like a crypt, cathedral, a couple different studios, a basement, loft, some halls. And that's just what's included. I actually don't know if you can buy extra ones, but it wouldn't surprise me. They're all very different sounding, though, so that's a, a nice inclusion. But all this is kind of stuff that you could find on any standard IR loader. Before that, we have a compression control, which can go from so subtle you can barely tell to just, you know, evening out the dynamics a bit to completely squashed. I quite like the uh, animation they have going here. Uh, very useful if you were, again, trying to avoid using too many outboard, you know, bus effects. It is a decently musical sounding compressor, though you don't get, you know, extremely fine tuned ratio or threshold controls here. But this is for people that don't want to mess with that. So I like the implementation here. Up before that, there is a harmonics control ranging from raw to rich. You can even... Click this destroy button, and uh, yeah, it, it gets ridiculous. Doesn't sound so good on cleans. Doesn't even sound that great on uh, high gain, in my opinion, unless you're going for some black metal Swedish thing. Um, but this is kind of a cool exciter sounding deal without being, you know, completely scooped out like a lot of certain sonic maximizers might do. But um, this is another one of those tonal controls that may not be represented in a regular cabinet sound, but still reflects the original sound of the mic'd up cabinet. So again, a good control for those that aren't super um, familiar with the way this works yet. Contour does a similar thing. It sort of acts as that resonance control in NAT IR, where it's just kind of a hi-fi thing. The more modern, the more scooped out, treble and bass heavy it is. Um, though it does sound like it's doing something more than just straight EQ, though it very well may be doing that. Uh, tone, this pretty much sounds like straight EQ, ranging from dark to bright. Again, I do like this <laughs> animation they've got playing here. Um, generally right down the center is where I tend to keep it. And since that is pretty much untouched, um, though you might find it to be handy, depending on if you have a dark or bright cab IR, you might be able to move the opposite direction. Um, input section, and then the power amp simulation. This is where things get really interesting. And you can, of course, get a little bit more in depth with the simulation mode. But this is sort of what I think brings out the magic of Wall of Sound, where you don't necessarily have to have two notes hardware. In fact, it kind of comes becomes redundant if you have two notes hardware, because if you're running a load box, then you already have a power amp sound. You already have a full amp head, so you don't need this. You would just turn it off. So you're already kind of losing a bit of what makes this magical. But let's say you have a preamp pedal. This could be from Two Notes' very own offerings, or even more preamp live, for instance, or especially a bass guitar preamp pedal, because those are extremely, extremely popular. Um, but this kind of takes care of everything post preamp for you. Um, you can demonstrate that with a preamp plugin without any other power amp stuff. So this is another Ignite Amps offering in our R1, sticking with the clean channel, and you can make it sound like it's driving through a EL34 or 606 or even EL84 power amp. Um, and of course you don't get such fine tuned controls with the, um, arcade mode. But again, if you are kind of in a direct to interface style recording environment, say if you got like that Laney studio preamp, you can get good sounds out of it, but it just doesn't sound as convincing. Whereas when you throw some legitimate power amp simulation on it, yeah, that's where those differences start to become completely unnoticeable between the real deal. So we'll have a listen to what that sounds like. And this is without tweaking. This is just kind of what this arcade mode gives you. Thank you. 
Switching to the simulation mode, then you're greeted with this sort of console like setup that might be more familiar to those that are you know used to mixing and making their own music. But if you're kind of new to this whole thing, then you might be more comfortable in arcade mode where you can switch back with this button here. You have some presets to choose from. If you'd like, though, if you don't own all the cabinets in those presets, then it's going to yell at you and tell you to go buy them um, where you can go to the store here with La Boutique. And then the main attraction, I suppose, would be the cabinet miking section, which we'll talk about here again, which I think is kind of the, the least exciting thing for me because I have all these IRs and, and programs that can do it for you, but it is still an interesting way of going about it. So with the pack that I have, at least, I have quite a few bass and guitar cabinets, uh, four bass cabinets to be exact, a 9x10, something you don't see every day. I like that a lot. You can still load your own user IRs as well. But for the guitars, there's actually a really good selection. So you got 4x12 greenbacks, you got a British Vintage 30, what I assume is loaded with, um, brownie back, which looks like a... Um, EVH cabinet, a Friedman cabinet, rectifier, and of course an orange 4x12. And again, with different selections of microphones, which, you know, I think most of these are pretty self explanatory and they're a good fit, which is what I like. Um, one thing that I do have a minor complaint about with stuff like Own Hammer IR is they just throw the same microphones at them every time, which is, again, good in one way because you can directly compare them. But in another way, it's like, you know, this mic may not work for this cab or this speaker combination. And it just, it's a waste and you'd rather, you know, hear it with something else. And they do a pretty good job with that. So you can see it's pretty varied. As with most programs that interpolate between impulse responses, you have a distance and center control, though doesn't exactly fairly represent where they're really being pointed. I have a feeling, um, but it's uh, still useful controls and just listen with your ears, not your eyes. At least in the GUI, you do have this handy little information here that will kind of tell you what's going on and what the cabinet's based off of most of the time. You can even go round to the back, which is a pretty cool thing. Generally not something I would ever do for modern material, but I've found like the classic, say, volume four and Sabbath bloody Sabbath tones from Black Sabbath. You can get really good results by miking the back of a cabinet, weirdly enough. Verify or however you actually are supposed to pronounce that is basically your delay or phase control. You're not going to notice if you are only using one cabinet, but if you are mixing between two different ones, like you can see down here, then you will want to dial in generous amounts of that or relatively conservative amounts at first to get a generous result. Um, it is fairly sensitive, like most of them are. Overload's kind of your natural speaker compression, harmonic distortion thing for high gain tones. Generally don't need a whole lot. It does sound pretty cool on bass though. And you can even mix in wet and dry signals. So if you like say you're playing a bass guitar and you want to still have a bit of the DI sound, then you know maybe dial back the wet. If you're playing a guitar, you don't want any of that, you know, raw amp sound. Just keep it 100% wet. Um, again, you can dial in between two separate cabinets. If you're in stereo, you can pan them. Otherwise, you're summing to mono. And so, you know, most of this is very much the same functionality you would find in your general IR loader if you have all these IRs, except it gives you a couple more interesting things that you might only find in, say, the amp block in an amp modeler or something of that sort. And of course, having these kind of exclusive cabinets does provide its own flavor of sound, even though you can absolutely load your own. So I like the mics and cabinets that are included here. It's just not different enough. And it's not even my first go to when I'm dialing in my first sound just because it is a little reliant on the whole graphic user interface part of it. Now, if it had like the time and frequency domain charts that Cab Lab does, then it'd probably be a different story. Either way, if you're looking for a particular cabinet sound, it's a very high probability that Two Notes has the exact one or something very similar available that you can load up in here. And if you're just using a tube head through a reactive load or say a plugin that maybe you're not crazy about the cabinet simulation, but it already takes care of the power amp as well, and you don't really want to do anything else to it, then this is a pretty worthwhile way to go about it, in my opinion. <laughs>
Now let's return to that initial scenario with the arcade mode, except now we'll have more fine-tuned control. So let's say you have a decent preamp sound you've recorded, but you want the full-fledged you know, power amp driving a cabinet tone. In this case, I'll be using Mercurial Reaxis since it's basically Mesa Boogie Triaxis in plug-in form, but this could apply to any other plug-in, a preamp pedal, a desktop tube recording thing like a Synergy preamp module, hell, even a combo amp effect send that you didn't feel like miking up, whatever the case may be, you can use Wall of Sound to fill in that gap. Now, I could just as easily load up Cab Lab, throw in an IR and call it a day, but to me, you can always tell the difference. It never sounds as visceral. It just sounds fake when put next to the real deal, um, and especially when next to something that does have actual power amp behind it. Um, so I always recommend throwing on at least something like TPA-1 to make up for that difference. But if we go to Wall of Sound and put it between our preamp and cabinet, and we can use the cabinet here if you like, but just show you, you don't have to. We have a power amp section, which can use a single tube, 606, EL34, EL84, or KT88 power amp design. And then what I assume stands for push-pull for class AB. Either way, um, this definitely sounds like the full-fledged, you know, 50 to 100 watt amps. And these sound, you know, closer to 25 watt or below. And they all kind of behave that way. So you have a couple different controls with presence and depth as you would expect. However, presence behaves a little weird. So most presence controls on amplifier heads basically cut some of the negative feedback going on in the power amp section and act more or less as a hi-fi treble control of sorts. It just feeds some more of that post 4K frequency back into the mix. This sounds more like a presence shift because on most of these you'll hear it doesn't sound full range until you dial it up to 100%, um, although depth is not the case on all of these, although on the KT-88, it actually sounds the most full with everything at 100%, so this may not dial in exactly like a regular guitar amp head or even some rack mount stereo you know, um, power amps that you would find from either VHT or Mesa Boogie or whatever, but um, these are very powerful and they definitely sound like power tubes being heated up, especially if you, you know, crank it up and um, boost the volume going into it. You can also change between a pentode and triode output. As you'd expect, triode is a touch bit quieter, but does some of the, you know, triode response that you might like out of a Mesa Boogie Mark II C Plus, for instance. I tend to prefer the dual tube 606 model for both guitar and bass, at least when it comes to metal, though the KT-88 is really great as well. Uh, the EL-34 sounds awesome, but it's a very British, you know, Marshall voice power amp, so be... Um, you know, aware of that, but if it's what you're going for, then it can work great. And regardless, this is a really great power amp implementation. It's not quite up there, in my opinion, to what the fractal audio models sound like, but they have the luxury of matching, you know, the preamp to the power amp. So kind of apples to oranges. And either way, I think this is a must have if you don't have anything else that emulates power amps. Um, again, there's free stuff out there, but you're using, again, one of those direct recording tools or have a favorite preamp plugin, this is kind of the magic tool, in my opinion, to make it sound real. At this point, we've basically not even touched the right half of the screen, so let's talk about that. Same recording setup, basically high gain preamp, no other cab or you know post effects going on, just a high gain preamp sound, and let's say you want to do practically everything. And I say practically because I am bypassing one section. So we'll have the power amp enabled, miking enabled, and even some of these post effects, including reverb, which you can either make your own custom sound with the different controls they have here, some presets with, say, Crypt and Loft and the things that I showed off earlier in arcade mode. You have a compressor control, which can range anywhere from, you know, basically nothing to ridiculous 20 to 1, almost a limiter at that point. Um, you got different attack, release, makeup, gain, threshold, everything you basically need in a compressor. It's pretty musical sounding to me. I like it quite a bit. 
and EQ, which you can change between bass and guitar frequencies. They work pretty well. I actually still like the guitar frequencies for bass, but whatever. Um, switching to parametric, you can widen this out and you know change it on a per frequency basis if you're really picky about it. Um, I think the guitar does work pretty well, though. Uh, the one thing I am bypassing here is the exciter because it sounds like a sonic maximizer, which generally sucks shit for high gain guitar might be okay for cleans. And I, I actually do like it on bass, but it scoops out all the good frequencies otherwise. So we're going to turn that off. But generally, you know, this kind of helps you not have to use hardly anything in a master bus. Most of the time, my rhythm guitar mixing setup looks something like high pass, low pass, a couple of notch filters to kill the resonant frequencies that are bothersome, maybe dynamic EQ on the honky mids or um, to kill some problematic low end, a bus compressor, a light one at that. And as you can see, this kind of takes care of a lot of that. Um, you're maybe one or two more plugins away and you're done. Um, you can even add rows down here if you want more cabinets and you can mix and make it stereo or whatever you want, really. And so with one plugin, you've taken the job of really one, two, we'll pretend that doesn't exist for guitar, three, four. Um, so that's pretty damn valuable for something that not only includes virtual cabinets, but a power amp and all these additional controls as well. So from my understanding, all this functionality is kind of built in into the live as well, which is pretty damn phenomenal, I think. Um, so uh, this is where it really comes in handy. If you're just needing a, you know, cabinet emulation tool, I think there's plenty of simple, if not free stuff out there that will get you there. But all this stuff is where it gets exciting for me. <laughs> For the sake of completion, I didn't want to end this video without showing you at least one cool use case with the exciter section in Wall of Sound, and I find this particularly useful with bass guitar, and actually this is what prompted me to get back into this plugin in the first place. So um, just for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to use the Dark Glass Ultra plugin from Neural DSP. What I'm actually using on the material I'm recording right now is the Alpha Omega pedal. I kind of wish there was a plugin version of that because it sounds really great. Um, but this is another one of those things where you can load a cabinet sound and it does sound good. Um, and in fact, at least in this plugin, it does sound like it has some power amp coloration to it, which is great. But if you're just using one of these pedals and you just use the cabinet IRs, then it's, it sounds fine. And even in a mix, it sounds really good, but it's missing something. And if I'm going through all the trouble to record guitars in the same way, then I want some power amp thump behind it. So this is kind of what saved the day for me. Um, now, I'll probably still be using Fractal Audio IRs for the real deal, but as you can see, you mix between a couple bass cabinets, you get some really cool results, still using that 6L6 power amp, still using a little bit of EQ, some uh, compression, and this is where the exciter comes in handy. So even without having any of the controls dialed in, it has a massive sound, um, or at least influence on the sound where it scoops out some of those, um, I think, guitar frequencies that that works on a bass. You know, you put it on a guitar and it sounds squashed like a BBE Sonic Maximizer, but it kind of works in this instance, depending on what cab IRs you're using. So this will be the secret weapon I have for bass guitar on upcoming material and will probably continue to be for anything that I directly record bass with because there's a lot of great preamp pedals, again, plugins that sound really cool, but they're always missing that tube power amp thump um, even a recording like a class D solid state amp is better than nothing, but it generally just doesn't have the same kind of character. And this just makes it fit in the mix. It makes it sound like your speakers are going to explode. It's awesome. Uh, it just has so much more power behind it. So this is probably what I'm going to stick with for bass guitar production in the foreseeable future. Because I like it a lot. Um, and there is so much to be had for guitar as well. But again, that's kind of taken care of in the way that I use load boxes and real amp heads. But for those of you that are 
you know, producing your own music. And if you're like me and not all that impressed with some of the DI manipulation stuff that's out there, then give this a go because damn, it really makes a difference. With that, I suppose there's not a whole lot more to say. Whether or not this product is for you is really going to come down to your workflow and your current setup, you know, depending on what gear you already have or plan to buy. But I feel for a lot of guitar and bass production, the magic sauce that's missing that I hear a lot of the times really lies in this plugin, especially on the bass side of things, depending on how you record guitar amps or VST plugins. Um, but you know, let's say you just buy a couple cabinets or even one of the packs for 40 or $50, just being able to use everything else that's built into here, I think is a really good value proposition versus a lot of other, you know, different cabinet simulations or, um, you know, even base utilities that I've not been super impressed with recently. So, you know, if you grab a couple cabinets that you'd like to have and, uh, you get basically a virtual model of that. And especially if you buy two notes hardware, say the captor for 250 bucks and you get basically, what is it? 18 cabs right out of the box. I mean, that's, that's a pretty damn good deal. If you ask me, um, even if you only use this, you know, once or twice on every project you use, um, really good value. And so I'm kind of kicking myself <laughs> for not really realizing this sooner uh, in terms of how powerful this is, because you know, it's really, it really doesn't matter all that much if you're just using the standard guitar amp through a load box, plugging into your audio interface. You know, I could get by without this, um, usually without this, because I'm going to a master bus anyway, definitely without that, uh, oftentimes without that. And you're left with, you know, micing up a cab, which is cool, but you know, that didn't excite me, but yeah, there's some really good value to be had in here. And um, again, I wish I had covered this sooner and figured out some of these tricks sooner. So in conclusion, Wall of Sound is pretty damn fantastic. Not to mention all of the collaborations that Two Notes has with some pretty reputable manufacturers. So, you know, grab a couple cabinets and I think you're going to find a lot more value than just some mic'd up speakers. Um, if you use this plugin to its full potential. That's it for me. Any other questions, comments, as always, please leave them down below, and we will see you next time. Bye.